Hi, I'm Jervis Lewis and in this video I'm going to show you how to build a simple real-time clock on your Commodore 64 in Commodore Basic. And I'm doing that because I recently watched a video by the 8-bit guy in which he attached one of those little LCD screens to the user port of his C64. Uh, while I am completely incapable of doing that with all the soldering and the electronic bits, I thought it was quite interesting that he's written a little basic program that displays the current time of day on his little LCD screen. And uh, I thought, well, this is a nice program programming exercise for Commodore Basic and I thought we can do that here on my emulator because sadly my C64 is not wired up. And um, what uh, we're going to talk about here is string formatting functions in Commodore Basic as well as the internal clock. So we, we're going to have the, the string formatting as well as the, the screen formatting as and how do I position characters on the C64 screen or on any Commodore screen and uh, uh, how does the internal clock work of the computer? The Jiffy clock, as they say in school. So um, let's uh, let's get started. I've got my Commodore 64 emulator Vice on the Mac here, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Control 2 to write in white so that the foreground color is white. And I currently have nothing in memory. That's good. And uh, let's have a look at how this internal clock thing works first before we even start coding. So there are two built-in system variables. One is called ti, and if I print that, you can see that it currently has this value. But if I print it again, then you'll see it has a different value. And it appears to have increased in the last few seconds by, well, quite a few digits here. So if I print that again, you can see it's increased well, well over a thousand now. That's quite impressive. And um, so uh, that thing seems to be working all the time. And in fact, what it does is it counts jiffies. Jiffy, you know, in Scotland they say, I'll be back in a jiffy. Yeah. And that means I'll be back in a very short amount of time. That's what a jiffy is, or that's what thing, that's what colloquially, colloquially a jiffy, I guess, refers to. And uh, on the Commodore machines, it refers to an increment of seconds. So on the PAL machines, it refers to uh, 50 increments per second so one jiffy is a 50th of a second whereas on that's on PAL machines and on NTSC machines it's a 60th of a second so they derive that from the refresh frequency of the screen um, so that's what TI counts so if I print that out again that's what it counts and if you switch on the system it's basically set to zero and then it counts 50 times per second uh, on power machine 60 times a second on on ntsc machines and from this large number which rolls over after 24 hours it rolls over back to zero goes back to zero it they derive another system variable which is called ti string and if i print that one out oops if i can uh, you know, spell that correctly ti string looks like this so we have some leading zeros there and you think, hmm, that looks interesting. Because if I print that out again, you can see that this, in fact, is counting seconds in the last two digits, proper minutes in the middle two digits, and hours in the left two digits. And the funky thing about both TI and TI string is that I can set that as well to a value. So right now it's 947. So if I set the value of TI string to be 947 and say 30 seconds, oh, well, that's four, isn't it? So nine, Jesus, what it's going on, 47 and 30 seconds. There we go. And if I set that to that, if I now print TI string out again, you can see that it has been counting the amount of seconds properly on that. So that's our real-time clock. Now, interestingly, the uh, Commodore 64 and other machines, they have these CIA chips built in, which are, um, I believe, interface chips. And if you look at the uh, description of these chips and the, and the pins, you can actually see that there is a hardware clock built into them uh, with alarm function, mind you, so very exciting. And apparently it is very accurate. However, that is not what the Commodore 64 uses as his internal clock. So that clock, even though it's built into that chip, is completely ignored on the system and the C64 does not use it. 
one of those things. I guess that keeps it universal to the Commodore basic design or whatnot. I have no idea. I really know nothing about electronics. I find it all really fascinating, but I just know not enough about it to you know make any statements about it. All I can tell you is that TI string has nothing to do with the CIA chips. It is in fact counting the jiffies, which is derived from the television frequency at which your machine runs. So my uh, emulator here, let's just have a look under uh, machine, under model, I believe. I'm running a PAL C64 right now. So that means my TI is incrementing 50 times a second. Cool. So, but you can see that from this string, we can now derive the time. But what we would like to refer to as the time is we would like to write the time as something like this. So I would, I would like to say 9, 47 and 55 seconds. So I'd like to put some colons in between there. And uh, so that means we need to reformat that string to make it look, you know, handsome on the screen. So let's see how we can do that. There are a few string functions on the Commodore Basic that we can use for this. And one of them is called left string, which as the name suggests, prints the left parts of a string that we give it. So I could say print left string of TI string. And then I also need to give it another number, which is the amount of digits I'd like to print. So in this case, I would give it two. And then I could say, well, that's the hours extracted. That's perfect. Uh, that's what I want. There's also another function which is very similar to left string, which is called right string, and it works almost exactly the same. So I can say print right string of TI string, and I also give it two, and that will extract the right two digits of the string that I give it. So in that case, that's the seconds. And of course, if I print that again, then you know the seconds will count upwards. So that's very exciting. Um, but there's also one that extracts the uh, middle part of that string. And that's kind of a little bit arbitrary. And uh, I suppose you can argue, well, that's the, the way Commodore implemented it is um, you have to give it two numbers. So you have to say print mid string of TI string. And then you have to tell the function where you'd like for the extraction to begin, which is in this case on the third digit. So you could say, arguably, you probably say perhaps it's the second digit, but no, you want to you want to skip two and start at the third digit. So let's say three, and then you tell the midstring function how many digits you'd like to print out. So in this case, that's two in order to extract the middle two digits. So if this is TI string here, then we're starting at the one, two, third digit. And then we start we're, we're printing this one and that one and we're skipping the rest. So in this case, it's probably going to be 47, 48, something like that. It's already 51. I've been talking for four minutes already. That's exciting. So if we print that again, it should still be 51. Yeah, there we go. So that's the middle two digits of that string. Great, so with that, with knowing that, all we need to do is uh, put a string together and re uh, reassemble TI string into a string that we can print out. So let's, uh, let's start doing that. Perhaps in line 20, I'm gonna start so I can, I can use the up the, the top lines to, uh, to put some formatting codes there. So um, let's say the time string that we'd like to print out is a string. So let's start by giving a string the first left two digits. So a string equals a string plus, whoops, plus uh, left string. Oh no, actually we can, we can just say a string equals left string of TI string two digits. Okay, that's a string reset to a value that we can print later on. So in line 30, we're gonna say a string equals a string plus uh, right string, oh no, sorry. Now we need to go for the mid string thing. So a string is a mid string of TI string starting at the third digit and we'll use two digits. And then in line 40, in fact, you know, we can always, uh, I can always insert some spaces here that it, uh, it looks a bit more attractive on the screen, doesn't it? So there we go. That's uh, just, just to space it all out a little bit, like with a space, you know, we've, we've got so much space these days. It's fantastic. So, so uh, here we'll say a string equals a string 
plus, and now we need the two right digits here. And in fact, you know, I totally did, I completely forgotten something, which I'm gonna insert in a minute, don't worry about it. Um, so right string of ti string, and those are the two digits. Now what I've completely forgotten here in my haste and uh, code formatting is of course that I wanted to use, that I wanted to add those little colons in the middle. And uh, I would do that, I can always do that in line 25, so I'll put that basically in the middle there, a string equals a string plus the colon. There we go. And the same thing will be true for line 35. So our full listing is now gonna look like this. We're gonna start by uh, populating a string with the left two digits of ti string, then we're gonna add a colon, then we're gonna add the middle two digits, then we're gonna add a colon, and then we're gonna add the right two digits. And perhaps in line 50, I'm just gonna print a string out so that we get a bit of an indication of what this looks like. Hey, there we go, that's perfect. So in line 60, I can now go to 20 and then run the program. And you'll see that my time has is properly formatted and is counting up. But of course, it doesn't look attractive and certainly doesn't look like uh, how swanky we could make it look. Um, and by perhaps overprinting it in the same place all the time and perhaps putting it in the middle of the screen. Let's tackle this one by one though, and uh, now that we have the time and it's properly formatted, perhaps we can make sure we don't just print a long list of numbers. Let's, let's start by putting it in the top right corner of the screen. So um, rather than just printing it out, uh, the easiest thing is to, like, to change line 50 uh, and amending it with a carriage with, with the CHR string of 147, which will then print a clear screen first. So that's an idea we could use. We could try that and then we can say print a string. And if we do that, then we get something like this. But um, so that's, you know, closer to where we want to be, but it's still not fantastic because occasionally we see the screen flickering and that is because the screen is being cleared and then the number is being printed. Well, there's really no need to clear the screen all the time. We can maybe clear the screen once at the beginning of the program, but then just over print the time in the same place. So rather than using the clear screen command, we could use the clear screen command at the very top so in line 10, we could say print uh, character string of 147 to clear the screen once. And then in line 50, instead of using 147, we could use 19. And 19 is equivalent to uh, just using the home key. So the home key just positions the cursor at the top of the screen and doesn't clear the screen. So in the first line here, in line 10 now, we're gonna, there we go, this is the listing in order. In line 10, we're gonna clear the screen once, and then we're gonna format the string, and then we're gonna go home and print the time out, and then we're gonna go to line 20. And that should get rid of that screen flickering now. Solid display, I like it, I like it a lot. Okay, this is very exciting, but let's also perhaps, instead of just the time, let's print the current time. Let's give, give people a little bit of an indication of what it is that they're actually seeing there. So um, let's go back and instead of just going home and printing a string, a string, I'd like to go and say print uh, perhaps a current time. And then I'm gonna go and print a string. Oops, not a four, a string. Hey, much better. So if I do that, then it says the current time. We're getting closer, we're getting closer. All I need to do now really is before I print these things out, I think all I need is a little subroutine that positions my cursor rather than at the top of the screen, I'd like it to position it in the middle and perhaps draw a little box around here. And this is one of those things that is a little bit, it's very possible with Commodore Basic, but it is a little bit painful, yet easy, yet painful, 
Well, it's one of those things. I will take you through the pain of the 80s and this is what it was like to flush hours of your life down the drain that you're never going to see back. But it is nevertheless fun to play around with these things. It'll also uh, teach you a little bit something about how typists like secretaries on all typewriters had to figure out how to center something in the screen because the thing is uh, current time is something like um, 12 digits let's count it one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve that's right so if i wanted to position that in the center of the screen I need to know how many characters my screen has or my piece of paper onto which I'm typing. And in this case, it's 40. So the C64 and the C128 um, and uh, some of the pets, they all have 40 columns of a display. Uh, unless, of course, the 128 has 80 columns. Some pets have that. The VIC has 25, 22. I've forgotten now. Um, I never had a VIC, uh, but it had it had considerably less. So you need to know the width of your screen and you divide that by two. So in our case, 40 columns is the screen width and we divide that by two, that's 20. Now we take our character string that we want to center in the middle of the page, in which case mine has 12 characters and I'm going to divide that by two as well. So that's six characters. And now I'm going to subtract 20 half the screen width minus half my character width which is six that that's 14 and that tells me i need to print 14 spaces and then i can start printing my character string and that'll be right in the center of the screen magic um, with the time it's it's very similar so we have six digits for the time plus two colons that's eight so uh, in, in by by that equation it's the uh, screen width is 40 divided by 2 is 20 and then we have eight characters here so that divided by 2 is 4 so we have 20 minus 4 that's 16 spaces that we need to print in front of the time string and then the time string is also going to be centered excellent See if I can remember that and turn it into a little subroutine here. Um, if we want to print a box around all that, then of course I need to go uh, one character back before that center can happen. So let's see if we can make it happen perhaps in line 200. So in 200, we're going to start and say, uh, uh, print a box. So that I remember what that was. So in uh, line 210, we can go ahead and uh, go uh, print character string uh, number 19 again, which is go home. Let's start there. And then in 220, let's uh, use, if I, if I say print and uh, start with double quotes, the moment I use my cursor keys or any of the other instruction keys on the Commodores, then uh, they will turn into these special characters. So let's start by printing a box in the middle of the screen centered. So let's go 10 lines down. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this inverse Q that you see here, that is in fact the, uh, the when I press the down cursor, as soon as I've pressed the double quotes. If I press double quotes again and use my down cursor, then it actually physically goes up or down. But uh, as soon as I start with the double quotes, then it prints that in, um, in kind of um, in uh, instruction characters. So this is now uh, being kind of remembered by BASIC, but it'll be executed as soon as I run the program. That's the magic of it. So um, uh, let me go and amend that by printing, in fact, so now that we're down, let's go and I said, uh, let's say, I, mean, I have to do that math again. I didn't, I didn't actually write this down. So this is 12 characters uh, divided by two is uh, six, so 20 minus six, that's 14. So I need to print 13 characters to the right and then i can start building my box so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten one two three and that's the kind of instruction symbol that commodore uses for the cursor to the right and uh, the box uh, there's, there's several types of boxes that you can build with with hard edges or with kind of half round edges and i'm going to use the round edges so that is shift u that'll print me this little character here and that's kind of the, the the upper left corner of my box 
then I need to go uh, shift C that'll print me this for 12 characters 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 1 2 and then I need to finish off that box with the shift I there we go and that is my line in the Commodore basic on a 40 uh, column screen you can actually put up to 80 characters onto one line of basic, which is why this now goes over to the second line here. So that's still all classed as line 220 in the code. Just thought I'd mention that. So in line 230, uh, that is me being on the second line of the screen now. Uh, let's use another print statement in which we now go um, the uh, 13 characters in again one two three four five six seven eight nine ten one two three and then we're going to start putting that that um, side of the box which is the b and then we can print one two three four five six seven eight nine ten one two uh, 12 characters for the middle bit there and uh, that is another shift b and that finishes that line off because we are going to print the box and then we're going to say current time and then we're going to say the time line 240 is going to look exactly the same so i'm just going to change the line number over type it and then uh, the computer will will do that twice and in line 250 we're going to finish off that box and it almost looks exactly like the top line here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten one two um, three and uh, then we're going to finish off that box with uh, shift J and of course with with lines which is shift C you get so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten one two and then close the box uh, with shift K awesome and in line 299 we can just return from our subroutine okay so uh, this is what the whole subroutine looks like right now. We're going to print a box. We're going to go home with the cursor in line 210. Then we're going to go down 10 characters. We're going to go across. We're going to start building that box and we're going to leave whatever's inside unoverwritten so there's no spaces that are being printed it's just the cursor that's being positioned and should anyone issue a print statement that is when things actually get overprinted and we're going to do that at the top part of the program much like we did um, in the beginning so uh, let's amend our first lines here and incorporate this thing i think uh, i'm going to start by line 10 that's currently printing uh, clearing the screen i would also like uh, to print chr string 5 which uh, which sets the um, foreground color to white i mean we have it set to white right now but if somebody were to change it then we can assure with this command that the foreground color will be white in which we will print this all can remain the same this is formatting our time string and in line 50 this is uh, uh, going home that's perfect currently it's going home and then printing the current time so we just need to amend that a little bit here so let's write that again line 50 first i'd like to go sub 200 of course so that we can position the cursor in line 60 we're going to overwrite that as well um, we're going to print our chr string 19 again whoops that should be a string here there we go and that will position the cursor at the top much like we have drawn the box and um, in line 70 I'm going to go ahead and print uh, some instruction statements again that's 10 lines down 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 well actually in 10 lines down we're printing the top part of the box so I need to go 11 lines down and then I need to go uh, across the screen 14 characters remember because that will center the current time 13 was centering the box 14 will center the words current time so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 1 2 3 4 it's all about planning you know it's all about in the mind and then we're going to say current time and that's all we do here because in line 80 we can then print 
a few more of these instructional characters. We're already on the second line, so all we need to do is make sure the actual physical time is now being printed across, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four. Uh, if that is correct, I remember there is six digits for the time plus two colons, that's eight, divided by two is four, 20 minus four is actually 16. So there we go. I, uh, whoops, that was not what I intended to do. Let's do that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then this is important. We're going to um, print a semicolon. And that means the print statement isn't going to go to the next line. It'll The cursor will basically stay there after having printed that on the same line. And the next print statement on line 90, where we're going to print a string, is going to print a string basically at the very back of our instructional cursor statements. Well, at least that's the plan. Let's see if it works in line 100. All I need to do is go back and rebuild a string and then we can just repeat the whole thing over and over again. Well, it's not just 20, I need to tell it to go to 20. There we go. Let's see if it works. Like magic, look at that first take. I like that. This is good, this is really funky. So this has done exactly what we wanted. It's, it's printed a box with the subroutine and then after the box is printed we're going to print the time inside this. This is good. There's just one more amendment that I'd like to make the, because the the time I, it's not it's not exactly stable. I mean don't, you know, don't set your world domination plans by this time. It'll it'll drift uh, every second. In fact, every computer clock drifts. If you're familiar with the Linux command uptime, it'll tell you something very similar. But Linux systems are usually up for a number of days. So you can, you can, if you type that in, you might get a printout of, well, the computer's been up for 147 days and it's currently using this much CPU power and this and the other. So um, on the Commodore 64 is of course not really a system that was designed to be up for longer than maybe a couple of hours at a time. Um, uh, and therefore it's one of those things that the, no computer clock is absolutely accurate. Uh, but of course modern computers do that because they connect to the internet all the time and basically refresh their time from very accurate time servers all around the world. So if we wouldn't have that then our computers would drift just as much. But uh, just to make sure that when you start the program, it should really ask the user what is the current time. And uh, we can implement that in perhaps at the very top here and ask the user that in line five. So let's input um, what is the current time. The question mark is being printed by the input statement, so we can give it TI string there straight away. Oh yeah, that's perhaps another uh, cool idea. First thing is uh, let's just uh, insert a, a, like, a, like a down um, command here. Whoops, sorry, the cursor goes down a little bit. And at the end here, I'm going to insert a few characters um, just to give the user a bit of an idea of how to enter the time because he can't just print grammar or something. He'd have to go H H M M S S, and when we'll do that, then it prints this as the first line of the program. Now the cool thing is if we skip this and if we don't type in anything, then it will just take the TI string that is currently in the system. So you can just hit return and there's your current time. And then if you print uh, something else, then you could say, I don't know, 15, 26 and 40 seconds. Ding, there we go. And then you've got another time. Homework. You can totally amend this and print several boxes on the screen at all times and uh, turn this into a world clock. And you can even add values to the hour value or subtract values depending on what type of time zones you'd like to display. That would be a cool project, perhaps for another video, I don't know, or perhaps a good um, homework. And share your code on GitHub and let me know in the comments um, if you've managed to do it because it's one of those little puzzles that, that keeps our brain entertained for hours and in fact days.
Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to share it with friends, family and total strangers, people on the bus, on the tram you meet. Hey, Jay's made this amazing video about how to build a real time clock on the Commodore 64. Check it out. And then be sure to tell them that 11 character crazy string. Uh, by the way, I've made uh, another video which was inspired by one of Tom's videos uh, about how to create random YouTube URLs using your C64. Check that out. It's very exciting. And um, if you like this content, please subscribe to my channel. And uh, if you'd like it even better, head over to my Patreon page and give me a bit of cash a month because that makes content like this possible. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.